everyone here. I hope you're all doing well wherever you are. As promised last time, today we're going to sketch three objects. So the first one that we're going to sketch is this mug. Just don't forget your um, viewpoint is really important. So you have to make sure where you're looking from at the object. So let's say I'm looking at the object from here. I can't change it in the middle of my work because everything is gonna change completely. So make sure, or if I'm looking at it from up here, like that, then I can't all of a sudden take it up here because the view, my viewpoint is going to change. So make sure it's always consistent, the angle that you're looking at the object. So that's one thing. The second item that we're going to um, sketch together is this little ceramic bird. And the third item, which is gonna be a bit more um, complex, is this teapot. So we're gonna draw these three together. Actually this one, I've gotta tell you the story, I painted this uh, in one of these places that you actually pay for the pottery and then you paint your own pottery. It's something fun that you can do. So if you wanna try it out, it's really fun. So let's get started. Okay, so first of all, we're going to draw this mug. Now I'm just gonna place it somewhere and I'm tr gonna try not to move it or change my viewpoint as I mentioned before. What you'll ne be needing is basically um, your H and B pencils, eraser, uh, sharpener, and if you wanna use ink, you could also uh, use ink. I'm gonna start with a B pencil. You could start with um, lighter colors, um, but I'm using a B just to make sure it looks dark enough in the video. So when we're drawing an object, it's best to break, try to break down that object into the shapes that you see in it. And you can also use guidelines. So as you see, my mug is basically like a cylinder. So I'm just gonna draw a box as my guideline. That pretty much covers the shape of my, um, you could use a ruler too, but I'm not gonna use a ruler, um, but you could if you want um, everything to be exact. But guidelines are always really helpful. So why am I, uh, using a rectangle here because really if you look at a mug it's like a cylinder and a cylinder is like basically a rectangle and circles so when I'm looking at my mug because I'm looking from high above the circle part of it is actually quite big and I'm gonna try to make this symmetrical. So these lines, these guidelines are good for that. So that's what I'm gonna do. Now I'm gonna do the rectangle part, which is basically my mug, the body of the mug. And the bottom is also going to be like a curvy because of that cylinder. So really, we've got a circle and a rectangle. And then if you look up on the side, we've got the mug handle basically. So when I look at it, it really looks like almost an oval shape to me. So I'm just going to do an oval shape. And then we're just gonna change it along the way. Okay. So then I'm gonna try to add in the handle. So once we figured out the basic shapes 
of our object, which in our case, we had like a rectangle, we've got our circle, and we've got our oval. Now we're gonna work on it a little bit more to give it more shape. And of course, these lines are always helpful when, helpful. when you have a symmetrical object, you can draw lines like guidelines that help you divide it and then make sure everything is completely symmetrical. Especially when you're starting out or when you're beginning, it's really helpful. Okay, so now right here, when I look at my, my image, just a little underneath where the circle ends, I've got the handle coming out. So that's the shape that I've got. And my oval is kind of like that. And then here, Okay, I'm just gonna erase this because now I'm gonna create exactly the lines that I see. So here when I look, this goes a little further down and then this goes up and then it becomes narrower here and then again it starts to become wider down here. So I'm gonna get rid of the extra lines. Okay, so I think that looks Good enough now. Okay. And once you're done figuring out where everything is placed, you can just get rid of your guidelines. So don't forget, especially when you're starting out, guidelines are very helpful. So I'm just going to erase all the extra guidelines now. Now that we know where everything is placed. Okay. So when I look at this, actually the edge, this should actually go in a bit further in. So I'm just gonna change where my line is and I'm just gonna create that curve down here that I see in my object. Like I said, it's like a cylinder. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna keep that in mind that our mug looks like a cylinder. Okay, so you've got the edge of your mug. When I'm looking at it, and now that I pretty much have the shape 
I can start putting in my shadows and everything. As you see, when we look at the object, there's places that I can see light. So I can kind of trace those spots for myself. And um, leave some guidelines for myself as to where I'm gonna completely leave without any shade. So there's gonna be spots. When I'm looking at the edge, actually, I can see the edge. So I'm just gonna create a second kind of like circle-ish shape inside this. Kind of like that. And that's where I'm gonna put my lines that I want to stay empty actually. So there's no shading in there. That's how I mark it. So there's some light there. So that's gonna stay like that. There's some there and that's gonna stay like that. And there's some there. Okay. So we're gonna start shading our object. Of course, this is the inside. And I want a circular motion because that's what I want it to look like. It's like a circle. So of course my lines and the way I'm creating motion should be in circular motion the way I'm creating my lines. But then little by little, you've got to see where you've got more shadows in your objects. So just let's start with the basics right now. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna just, um, do my hatching everywhere, but I'm gonna leave where I want the lights to be. So again, like here there's some lights that I'm gonna leave. Here there's light. And then I've got some light here. Actually, when I look at my mug, there is a little bit of a line here. So I'm just gonna draw that in and there's some light there. Maybe not exactly there. It's actually a little up higher like that. There. There's a little bit of light there. And so I'm gonna try to trace everywhere that I've got my lights, like on the edge here too, you'll see light. So I'll just do it like that, and like that, and like that. So on the edge, I've got those um, reflections of lights, and I've got a little bit here And I've got some here, like very small. Okay, traces of light. Now, I'm gonna move to the handle and I'm gonna start um, hashing that too. So we'll just hatching that. And then I'm gonna probably have to for sure cross hatch to create Okay. 
Okay. Now here with the cylinder part, I'm also going to do my hatches. We're going to try to do the first ones as light as possible. And as I said before, actually, if you want to go back to um, my previous videos, I have an introduction to um, painting material tools and techniques video that you can watch um, for explaining about the pencils, the H and the B pencils. And also we've got another um, video. It's called um, Easy Sketching Lesson for Beginners. So if you want to go back to those videos, um, you know, that explains a little bit more about the pencils and hatching. You can also do that as well. So as you see, I'm trying to be as light as possible, like go as light as I can. Of course, I don't want it to be too light because I want you to see what I'm doing. So if I were doing this for myself, probably I'd go a little lighter to begin with. Maybe not, who knows. <laughs> okay, so like I said, we're gonna try to leave those areas that have the lights lighter. Sometimes if you go over them by accident, you can also go in there with an eraser and um, just make them lighter. Kinda like that. Okay, so now we're gonna keep shading and shading and shading to create the different layers of shade because that's how we are going to give this object definition and um, depth and volume basically. Um, also, using shadows really helps too. So that's another part that we have to consider. So I'm looking at the shadow of the object when I'm looking at the handle of the mug, basically I see um, there's a shadow right below it. So it's actually right here. So I'm just gonna pencil in the shadow. I'm actually thinking maybe I should take this handle a little bit up higher because yeah, that's why I say try. That's why I always say try not to change your um, viewpoint, because um, yes, I think in the beginning I was looking up closer. Now I'm kind of looking from another angle. So I think I should move this a little bit. Yeah, I decided to move it. And that's one thing to consider. You can always change things as you go because, you know, at some point you're looking at something and you think you got it right, but then you notice, no, nope, I should have um, made this section a little smaller or this a little longer, you know, just depends. Um, it's human eyes, so we can always make like little mistakes, but along the way, we're just going to fix it. Maybe not that short, but I want it to be here probably. Okay, so I'm gonna erase this. And then I'm gonna put this here. 
and I'm gonna go like that. Mm -hmm. I think it looks better now. Oh, I see there's a shadow here too, actually. And that's probably a little something that I did not see the first time when I was doing this. There's a little bit of a shadow here. Okay. And then this goes up with a little bit of a sharper angle there like that so we can change that to I'm gonna move this um, area that I said we've got light a little up further now. Okay. There. Okay. Okay, so like I said, we've got a little bit of a shadow right here. We can put it right in because it's quite a dark shadow. And then we just go down under. Okay, I'm gonna continue um, with the shadowing. So as I said, first I've got the one shadow right here being underneath the handle. So I'm just gonna pencil it in there. And it's a little, it's the little narrower on top and it gets a little bit wider on the bottom. And then I've got another shadow right starting around here. It's like a, it's like a, almost another circular shape. And it comes out to here. So if I draw a line from, because I can see the shadow starting right from underneath here and it just goes on up to here and here we've got a little bit of a curve and it comes right up to here kind of something like that okay so of course because our shadow is darker i can go right in and already do the shadow with a darker tone. So that's what I'm gonna do. And sometimes depending on your um, sources of light, you might get different shadows with different tones. Or your shadow might be like in one section, it might be darker in another section, it might be lighter. It all depends. That's why it's always best, even if you're sketching or drawing something from imagination, from your imagination, it's always best to have a reference. 
especially if you're trying to make it um, realistic, of course. Because otherwise, it might not turn out really the way you want it to be or a, a way that it actually makes sense or appears to be real, you know? Okay, so I'm gonna leave that. Also, when you're taking a picture, because when I'm looking at this object right now, it's quite symmetrical all the way, like the cylinder looks the same to me from top to bottom, but when, um, there's also almost another shadow here too. But when, it, when I took the picture, when you look at the picture, it kind of looks like it's um, narrower on the bottom. So keep in mind, what you actually see is never the same as what um, your camera takes, never. So you could always use, a, of course, a photo for guidelines, but it's not always whatever you see in there is not 100% accurate and you kind of have to use your common sense as well in many cases, you know. And sometimes just have a real object as a reference that helps too. And I guess this is something that comes with um, experience, you know. The more you do it, the easier it gets. So I'm just making my hatches like darker and darker. I'm just creating more lines to create more depth in my um, object. And of course, like I said in my other videos, it, the direction that I'm hatching always has to be consistent with my object, depending on what my object is. So of course, if it's a circle, you have to have circular motion, you know? If um, it's a rectangle, it's more like lines that are in line with the rectangle. So it all depends on your actual object, you know? Okay, so as I said, we have the shadow here and here and there. So I put in my shadow. And of course, your shadow is always going to change based on different factors. So basically, it depends on where you're looking from. So your viewpoint is really important. If I change my viewpoint, the way I see the shadow is going to be completely different too. Also depends on your sources of light and how much light you have. What are your sources of light? Is it coming from different directions? Is it hitting the object from the left side? Is it hitting the object from the right side? Is it hitting it from top? Is it hitting it from front? It all depends and it's going to change everything. It's going to change the shading on your object. It's going to change the shadows. It's going to change everything basically. Okay, so I know these are my shadows right here. 
Now I'm going to continue shading my object, but as I shade, I can see that there are parts that are darker. Like when I'm looking at the body of my mug right now, I see that there's way more because my light here is hitting my object from the side, from the left side. I've got my light on the top and the left side of my object. So this is how the light is hitting my object from above and from the left side. So I can see I've got more shadow here. Of course, there's, there's some shading that needs to be done here too, but the darkest area on the body of my mug is right here on the right hand side. So I'm just hatching and hatching. Now, it seems because of the way my mug is curved, I can see a little bit of a darker area here. We'll see how it goes. But here on the bottom is a little darker now. On the left side, and I think that's because of my handle too. The handle of the mug that we've got here. Because I've got a little bit of shading here. So I'm just going to add in more shade. And I guess, yeah, there's, when I look at the bottom, there's more shading going on here. Okay. Now, when I look at the I see right below this edge, there's a little bit, of course, because the edge is a little, it's sticking out a little bit. So it's creating a little bit of um, shadow underneath or a little bit of a shade here. So this is gonna be darker. And now when I look at this, my shade here continues. On this part, I've got more of a shade. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to continue this a bit more because I've got more here, more shade. And even on the left side, when I see, this is because of the way the light is reflected. I even see that like when I look over here, there's a little bit of a darker area. So I'm just gonna But not too much. If I were painting this, I would um, probably, although when you're painting, you're pretty much following what you do in sketching too. But um, things are a little different when painting. Okay. So let's see. Yeah, and I shouldn't change my viewpoint because when I do, 
like I said, when you change your viewpoint, everything changes. Like I was looking at my object from further left for just a moment and then I thought, oh, I've got to add a bit more to the body of the mug. But if I go back to where I was, then I know, no, I don't have to add um, anything else there. There's a little bit of a shadow here compared to the other side of the handle because uh, here is a little bit darker. So I'm just going to put that in. Okay. Okay, let's see. So yeah, this is where I see most of the shade, the darkest. So I'll just continue there. And then it's, it kind of here, things change. Now again, if I were painting this, I see so many different colors in there that I would put in. But right now, or like the reflection of light, right now when I'm looking at this, I see the lightest spot right around here because there's a, there's a reflection. There's a reflection of light here that I see. So I could still go darker around that And I can leave that part with the reflection lighter. So let's do that. I'll continue to Put in my lines because we're trying to create contrast. In painting and drawing or any art form really, contrast is what brings everything to life. Contrast is what gives meaning to everything. Just imagine, without contrast, nothing would really mean anything anymore. You can only understand light when you see dark. Okay, now when I look at the inside of my mug too, I see there's darker areas here too, especially on the sides. So I see my darker areas and I'm going to put them in again. Don't forget, it's always important how you put in your lines. The direction of the lines are very important. But yeah, here we are trying to create depth. I better not forget where I wanted my light to stay where I marked it. You see that that's the light. That's the lighter area. But then here, it's like really darker, the inside of the mug. And that's how I'm showing it, by shading. The more shade, the more I can show that. There's depth.
And of course on this side too, I've got the same thing going on. Don't forget the light, lighter areas that we left. We're not gonna go in there. So, of course there's sketching and there's drawing. Usually when we're a drawing, it just has more detail, you know? So a drawing is usually like a finished piece where we're sketching. Um, it's usually not a finished piece that you have with all the details. And when we're painting, we really don't need all the details. Well, you just have to understand form. You just have to make sure you start with the right image because otherwise your painting might not turn out as pretty as you were hoping it to be. So of course the inside of my mug is definitely gonna be darker than the outside. But here when I'm looking at this image, or I should say at, at my object, I see that I've got more shadows or more, more of a darker shade on the sides of this, even though like all together it's dark. So I'm just gonna take a darker pencil. This one is a 4B. And I'm just gonna make the darker areas darker. All those darker areas that I wanna create darker shades. Like I said, all together, the inside of the mug is darker. This is kind of like meditation too. <laughs> You see, more, most of art forms are really like meditation. Once you get going, it's just so relaxing. Yeah, I see most of the shade. And it's funny because when I'm looking at this, well, it's not funny actually. There's more light coming in like that. I'm just showing, I'm just drawing the line so you can see. So the darker shades are here. And there's like a lighter, yeah, there's a reflection of light right there. So I've got kind of like a lighter tone going on here. It's really hard to see it, but that's what's happening. It's because of the ceramic and the way it's um, reflecting the light. Yeah, that I can see that in there. And as I said, in a painting, probably you would show it more with uh, different colors that you use. I'm thinking in this case, it might not even be a good idea to show that, to show that reflection there. It all depends on when you, what you wanna to do too, but just because, here, we don't have much color going on. 
I kind of don't like that. Maybe I'll get rid of it, we'll see. Now that I, I'm using a darker color, I can kind of go in there and um, draw in all the border lines too. Here I'm just gonna go darker because it's the inside. So I'm just gonna separate the inside from the outside. Of course, if I were doing a painting, but I thought since we're just you know going through some sketching lessons too, it's better to just show everything but if I were doing a painting it wouldn't I would just do uh, the like a very simple drawing just to show where everything is gonna be I would not shade it at all it wouldn't need shading I would maybe shade a little bit here and there no I would leave that to the paint actually so really when you're drawing, you don't have to have like a, something with like a lot of detail in it. And again, it depends on the painting too. Like there was once that I was um, doing this white dress. It was actually, I was doing um, our wedding picture. So a drawing of our wedding picture and um, Of course, my dress was white, so I decided to put in a lot of shadows too in the drawing, a lot of detail. And sometimes you might need to do that, but in most cases, your drawings will be simple, you know? Okay, so again, we're going with the darker areas. And we wanna create borders now. Here, I want it to be a little rounder. Don't forget, you can always blend too with, uh, you can use different things to blend, but a really nice one um, is just using good old tissue. Huh. It really helps with blending. Like here, I just want to do a little bit of blending. Okay, so let's create a little bit more shadow, a little bit more shade, because here I see it's still way darker. So we're going to put in all that. The 
that's underneath that circle section that we had. So we've got more shadow here. But still, even though I know my darkest area is here, still. We can still create shade in other areas and then little by little, just make it darker in the areas that we want to. I'm going to take again a lighter pencil and continue with my, so this is just the B. Continue with my regular. Another thing that you can do, don't forget, sometimes the pencil, the graphite will smudge from here to there, as you can see. You can use um, a tissue to underneath your hand, but be careful still where you place it. So as you see, as we are adding more and more shades, the object is coming to life, it's starting to actually show depth. And like I said, our shadow is gonna be the darkest. Again, everything depends on what you're doing with your object. Basically what you're painting or what you're drawing, do you want it to be realistic? Do you not want it to be realistic? There's so many factors to consider. But you have to be patient. If you want something with more detail, you just have to be patient. Like that light is kind of fading away here. kind of going in my borders I'm just making those lines a little darker
actually the light should be on top where this edge is. These parts should have the lighter areas. I'm gonna do a little bit of um, cross hatching here because as you see, we've got a darker area here and then here on the side. And then the inside, right here, there's a little bit of darkness. That I see in the handle. So I'm just gonna go darker right in here. Because of course, there's also a shadow created here. But of course, I'm going to continue putting my lines everywhere. Always use an eraser when you change your mind about something and if you want to change something. Okay, so I've got my darker shades of course here, but there's also a little bit of shadow right here that I see right on the edge. So I'll just add that in. And then I want this to be, yeah, right here maybe. So I'm gonna get rid of this extra part. As I said, when you're painting, you're not gonna do this much work on a sketch. But since I thought we're gonna talk about sketching, it's just better to go through all the details together. So again, when I look, there's a little bit more fine lines here, darker lines, there we go. There, and I'm just gonna go down here. It continues like that. And it stays there like a, yeah. So that's how the darker shade continues. And I've got a, a little light here that I should try to make it stay more pronounced so there we go so if i go here and just 
leave that right where you see the curve, the first curve on the handle, there's a little bit more light there. Now again in painting, if I were painting this, I would do a couple of shades of white where I'd leave my lighter area like really white, just like the lightest part of the light would stand out like that. But with drawing, I'll just, um, I'll just blend things a little bit more. Okay, so that's that. And then this part of the handle, like we said, it starts narrower here but then we've got more sh shading here and I'm just gonna add to that, like right there. And it kind of then blends right in. And then here I've got some light too. Here I've got some light. So I can kind of show that right here. And then here. throughout my object I see the shades and I'm going to keep adding in the shades if I were doing this with acrylic or oil paint I would just um Put in the lights. But now we can kind of just use an eraser to put in the lights with my paint. Just go over with lighter paint and add in the light on top once you're done with the darker areas and then blend things in. But when you're drawing, you gotta leave those white or the lighter areas lighter or just use an eraser to get rid of the darker shades sometimes. I can really see this lighter reflection here. So I'll just keep it in there. Again, I'm gonna take a darker pencil because I still have to go darker on my shades, on, my, on the shadows. So we're gonna continue with that.
like I said, these shadows are going to be the darkest areas. Make sure you don't lose the border of your object. So we're just shadowing away. I shouldn't move this too much. Okay, our other shadow, of course, is gonna be dark, very dark. So lots of dark shading. It's all these shades and shadows that really give us the illusion of depth.
on a piece of paper. Gonna take my lighter pencil again, just a B. Continue to work with my shading basically. Here I've got some light. So I'm gonna go around it. Yeah, I've got like a line of light here. So I'm gonna keep it lighter. And then like I said, here where the handle of the mug attaches to the mug, you see a little bit of shading again. And even here, there's a little bit of shading. Again, because there's also light hitting the object from the front. Here I've got a little bit of a, right where the handle is, I've got a little bit of a, shade again. So it's a bit darker. And as I said, there's a little bit of shade here too but not much. I'll leave those spots of light in there where actually there's nothing but light. I'm not sure if you can see it, but it's there. A little bit of cross hatching here won't hurt. Try to leave the lighter areas in here too. So we can go dark around them. And then there's like a little bit here and there.
creating a little bit more depth right in here. I still need this area to be the darkest of all. See, because yeah, it's getting less light on that side. But of course, again with my lighter, I'm just gonna go in there, create more. shade and kind of blend everything together. You can also, like I said, use your tissue blend things in a bit more where you want to. Even here, I could use it to blend in the dark areas with my lighter area. I'll use it here too on my handle. Now of course there's way more work you can still do on this to make it even better but I don't want to bore you. You pretty much continue with this and look like right now again as I look at this I see that I still want darker lines here. So I continue with my darker lines. And it just goes on and on until you feel like you're where at you want your image to be and you're happy with it. I hope you've liked this video guys. Please make sure to subscribe so that you're notified for the next videos as soon as they're uploaded. Also share with your friends and like this video. Till next time, goodbye.